we've had some reports of some localized drought. It hasn't quite been as widespread as we saw in 2018, but still a problem for some folks in some areas. And so while drought mitigation management strategies, I could spend a day talking about them, I've decided to zero in on timing of weaning as the focus for our educational topic today. And the reason for that is, is it's pretty obvious that this steer calf got some age on him. He looks to be well over 500 pounds. He looks like he's ready to wean, but these calves, you know, it might not be so obvious. And so what I'm hoping to do today is to provide some content and some idea on when we can wean, why we might consider early weaning in the face of some drought conditions and, and some strategies to get those calves off on the right foot if you have to take them off of their mamas sooner than what you normally do. Like I said, we've seen some localized drought here in, in the past few weeks or so pop up. We've had some dry conditions in southwest Missouri. And the year that we've had so far, we've had a lot of forage growth and we've had a lot of hay put up, but forage quality seems to be lacking from reports that I've gotten across the state. Now, an important distinction between 2020 and 2018 is that in 2018, we had to start feeding hay early in the fall of 2017, and that really depleted our hay reserves going into the 2018 grazing season. We then didn't make very much hay in the spring of 2018 because it seemed like we went from winter to summer overnight with no real spring. And so when it turned off real dry in June and July, our backs were up against the wall with a lack of forage availability, both in pastures and in our hay barns. This year is going to be quite a bit different because it seems like we've got a lot of hay around, but the quality is what's going to be lacking. And we're in a period of our forage growth curve where we really kind of hit a lull. You can see in that bottom right picture. We get two peaks of fescue growth each year, one in the spring, one in the fall. And August is really when our forage growth potential bottoms out. And so any pasture forage inventories that are low right now, it's likely that they're going to be low for a period of time going forward before we really get that fall growth. And so if you're in short forage in your pastures, the question becomes, should I feed through? Should I start to use up some of these hay reserves that I've built up? Or if I'm spring calving, should I early wean calves? Now, one of the things that I, I don't think we as specialists, when we're making these recommendations that thou shalt early wean or do something like that, one of the things that I don't think we take into account enough is that if you say that you shoot for a, let's say a February 1 calving date, that doesn't mean that all the calves are born on February 1, even if you have a highly successful artificial insemination program. Typically, a calving season is going to be, if you're using planned breeding seasons, a calving season is likely going to be somewhere in the 60 to 90 day range under normal conditions. And in that case, let's say you started to calve February 1 and you finished calving May 1, which might be a little extreme. That's a 90 day calving season. The average age of the calves in the herd is going to be 120 days. But calf that was born on day one of the calving season is going to be 165 days old. And a calf that's born on May 1 or the last day of the calving season may only be 75 days old. And so the question becomes when a state specialist says, well, you can early wean your calves as early as 80, 90 days of age, that doesn't take into account that range, that bell curve. The important biology that we need to communicate or translate today is that in reality, early weaning is only a, a problem if the digestive system of the animal is not competent enough to handle a change in feed from primarily milk and some forage to a forage and supplement of some kind. And so an important piece of all of this discussion is from the rumen side, the rumen development, okay? And so when a calf is born, it is essentially a functional monogastric animal. The rumen is not online yet. Remember, there's four compartments to a ruminant stomach, the reticulum, the rumen, the omasum, and the abomasum. And so in a newborn calf, the abomasum, or the true stomach, is the dominant compartment of the stomach. And as the calf develops, the rumen then becomes the more dominant component of the ruminant stomach. And an important component of ruminal development is the development of papillae. These papillae are these finger-like projections that increase the surface area and allow for greater nutrient absorption. So when everything's working well in a ruminant stomach, the microbes in the rumen 
our fermenting feed and converting those into what we call volatile fatty acids. Those volatile fatty acids are absorbed out of the rumen through those papillae and those volatile fatty acids are absorbed into the bloodstream and that serves as the nutrient source for the ruminant. In most ruminants, the rumen is developed by 12 weeks of age, which would be about 84 days of age. Now, there's been some estimates that would suggest that calves as young as 60 days old are already eating a percent of their body weight in pasture forage. And so the question is, 12 weeks is probably a very safe number in terms of when the rumen is developed and when those animals could hypothetically be weaned. Certainly the dairy system has created a different set of characteristics where those calves are weaned essentially at birth. They're fed milk for a short period of time and then transitioned onto a starter or growing ration. And so we can influence that 12 weeks of age. Certainly I know people that are feeding bucket calves that wean them off of milk by six weeks of age at the latest. So just make sure that if you consider early weaning, you're thinking about how the rumen development fits into this equation. Now from the cow side of the equation, cow nutrient requirements increase when we go from gestating to lactating. So when she calves and she starts to lactate, her nutrient requirements are going to increase dramatically. And in fact, her nutrient requirements will peak about 60 days post calving. Now, there's been multiple estimates done in multiple locations, and, and in general, it's suggested that when you take a calf off of a cow, when you dry her up, that her nutrient requirements are going to drop by about 40%. The practical way that I like to look at that or think about it is that every two and a half days that a calf is weaned is going to save about a day's worth of feed for a cow. And so from that perspective, early weaning to me is an important tool in our toolbox. It's not the tool. It's an important tool because it's a potential for some significant feed savings. And especially when you think about quality, you know, if we've got poorer than average quality forage this year, how that matches up with the nutrient requirements of a lactating cow is not near as well as it is matching up with the nutrient requirements of a dry cow. And along those lines, when we have that disconnect of the nutrient requirements and the forage quality, we see that come out as body condition score change in these cows. And the age old question is, is it cheaper to put a body condition score back on a cow or to put 100 pounds of weight on a weaned calf? And we'll kind of go through that a little bit more here. Okay, so this data, I'm going to just be very upfront about it. This data is from the Sandhills of Nebraska. It came out of a Nebraska beef report. It would have been on a warm season perennial forage system pasture, but the relationship that they show here in their spring calving cows is important, and it's something that I want to talk about. Okay, so they weaned a set of calves off of a one herd and a large ranch every two weeks from starting August 18th all the way through November 24th. And what they measured was the body condition score of the cows at the time of weaning, okay? And so essentially the cows that had calves weaned on August 18th were in a body condition score of six. In a little over 10 weeks later, they had sacrificed, so cows that were weaned, had calves weaned around Thanksgiving, those cows were in a body condition score of four. And you'll notice that the data, it's interesting to me, it is a linear decrease in body condition score relative to um, timing of weaning. Now in the warm season forage systems, you'll remember that the forage quality is gonna peak in the early summer and it's going to taper off. So it's not quite the same. There was not the fall quality that we have here in the fescue belt. So it's not quite the same on the surface, but the point is, is that when forage quantity and quality are below cow nutrient requirements, we're going to see that come off as body condition score. So hypothetically, you might take a 400 pound calf and make a 500 pound calf out of them by holding them for the next 60 days. But the question is, did you truly convert nutrients from the forage into pounds of new weight gain in your cow herd, whether that's cows or calves, or did you merely trade weight from the back of a cow onto the calf that you then have to replace on the cow later on in the future. So, you know, what I'm insinuating is that when we hold these calves through periods of time like this, that we're creating a nutritional deficit that we will have to pay back on our cows at a later date. Remember that our objective is to have these cows at a body condition score five or greater on a one to nine scale 
at the time of calving to ensure that we have a successful rebreeding in the subsequent breeding season. And so if our body condition score is six and it stays a six, that's fine. If our body condition score is a six and it goes to a five, that's fine. But if we shed two body condition scores off of our cows in a relatively short period of time, solely for the sake of having an acceptable weaning weight, I don't know that we're necessarily doing our herds a service. The other thing that you have to think about is from an economics perspective, when we think about these calves and putting weight on them, we also have to consider not just what they would sell for at the time that they've gotten to your acceptable weight, but what the difference in the value is of the animals between the day that you considered weaning them versus the day that you really weaned them. And so I took the Missouri Weekly Feeder Cattle Weighted Average Report from the Missouri Department of Agriculture website, and this is actually last Friday's aggregate of auctions across the state. And I, I made a couple of assumptions. So my first assumption was that if we wean springborn steer calves now, they were going to weigh somewhere in the neighborhood of 400 pounds. I chose 377 just to err on the light side. Okay, so those steers sold for $1.73 a pound, which is $653 a head. Now, if we carried those animals for another, let's say, 75 to 90 days and put another 200 pounds on them and sold them at 568 pounds, their value is $1.56.51 a pound or $888.97. So when you do something like that, you're not truly getting $1.56 per pound for the additional 200 pounds or 190 pounds of weight that you're putting on the animal. The additional 191 pounds is worth about $235 or in a sense $1.23 a pound. And so from my perspective, a value of gain of $1.23, it's probably makes sense to put more weight on those calves, whether you do it with using the cow as your feed source, whether you do that cow plus creep feed, or whether you, you precondition those calves, you wean them and precondition them at home. It, it depends on the operation, but the way I like to think about value of gain is that feedlot cost of gains are about 85 cents right now. When we're putting weight on calves, we like our cost of gains to be about two thirds that of the feedlot. And so that's going to put our backgrounding preconditioning cost of gains in the 60 cent range. If we can put weight on these calves for 60 cents and sell it for $1.23, that's a good trade. But if we get to a situation where that value of gain is below what a feedlot cost of gain is, there's really no point for us to put that weight on those animals. We would simply be cutting our losses by getting rid of them. Now, the hard thing to do with the value of gain is that I can take a look backwards and do value of gain calculations, but I cannot look in the crystal ball forward and see what the value of gain is going to be when I sell them. And so you have to understand that we're merely making a projection right now if we try to say that the value of gain is going to be $1.23 a pound in 60 days when we go to sell those calves, there's plenty of opportunities for the market to change between now and then. And so, so just understand those value of gains, they can be an important tool, but they're also not going to be a guarantee of future success. So from a nutritional recommendation standpoint, if you're faced with a situation where you have to early wean these calves, the number one thing that I recommend, if you're going to feed them at home and you are not accustomed to feeding calves, to backgrounding, preconditioning calves, high quality feed is important to get acceptable gains. What I like to tell folks is that you're going to have to supplement these calves. You're not going to be able to put them out on free choice hay and expect them to gain more than a half a pound a day in most cases. If you want them to gain a pound and a half, two pounds a day, you're probably going to need to feed them at least a percent of their body weight per day in, in some kind of a supplement. I would encourage that supplement to be at least a commodity mix that's 14% crude protein. You know, a very simple route would be to use a branded starter feed. Um, I like those because they're not the cheapest option, but they're probably the most convenient option in that they're, they're formulated for you. They provide you recommendations on feeding rate. You can also do your own blends or mixes too, dependent on what market prices are. I really like 50% corn, 50% distiller's grains because distiller's grains is 30% protein and corn is 9% protein. So you make a nearly 20% crude protein supplement that is very energy dense. One last comment about this. I'm not afraid to feed silage to light calves like a lot of people are. Just make sure that you add some protein to that silage so that you meet the protein requirements of those calves. And to me, the other piece that's super important on this is to make sure if you're early weaning them and putting them in a lot of some kind, make sure that they know how to use 
the feed bunks, the water, and especially if we're going into the dog days of summer, make sure that they have some shade. So shade recommendations, we typically will use about 20 square foot per head in terms of coverage for shade. What I like to do when I'm getting calves adjusted to a, a new environment is I like to overflow the water for a day or two, just so that those calves will learn or have an opportunity to see water. They might be accustomed to drinking out of a pond or a stream and not know how to push the ball down if you've got ball waterers or something along those lines. I also like to provide an open top tank as well in the back, as you can see there on the right, just to help them transition a bit. Another thing that I like to do, especially with balling calves, is I like to put a feed bunk in the pin perpendicular to the bunk that they're going to be eating out of just to help kind of break up the flow a little bit. Because, you know, those calves are going to be a little stirred up the first day or two after you wean them and they might be pacing around. That just gives them more opportunities to run in to feed. I also like to feed some hay in those bunks the first couple of days because hay is going to be the closest new feed to what they've been consuming previously out on pasture. And high quality grass hay sure seems to be palatable even to really light and young calves. Now, just so y'all are aware, I've had to early wean calves as young as 60 days twice now in the last 10 years. And each time I've gotten along with it extremely well. In 2011 or 12, we weaned at about 100 days of age and we had half a percent death loss in the group all the way through finishing. We actually fed the calves out all the way. We got along extremely well with it. I don't have any concerns about doing something like this. Just make sure you take care of them and you put a little bit of effort into the animal husbandry in the first few days because any time invested on the front end is going to pay you back big time. My final thoughts about this whole deal is some pasture forage shortages will make for some tough decisions for folks. We have a lot of hay this year, which is different than previous drought years, but the quality is going to be poor. And I question whether that quality is going to be sufficient to support a lactating cow. And I question whether if we hold the calves on the cows and we feed this poor quality hay, if we're actually going to meet nutrient requirements or if we're simply going to basically rob Peter to pay Paul, meaning that we take weight off of the cow's back and put it on the calf and creating a nutritional deficit that we have to backfill in the cows later on. Now, what we're seeing from an economic side is that the value of gain would support raising these calves to a normal weaning weight, even if you have to feed them separately from the cow. An early weaning, which most would consider less than 150 days of age, is going to spare some body condition score on the cows, and it's going to spare some feed resources as well. It's just more efficient to feed that calf separately if you have only low quality forage to feed to the cow. Is 150 days considered normal weaning age? And if a calf is weaned at greater than 150 days, could it do well on only forage or should a supplement still be provided? The normal weaning age in the beef industry is typically going to be somewhere between seven and eight months of age. You'll see a lot of folks that will calculate what they call a 205-day adjusted weaning weight. That's a pretty popular date. My concern is when folks rather than picking a weaning age, they pick an acceptable weaning weight. Uh, I question how much body condition score that they give up on their cows trying to get their calves to an acceptable weaning weight. Um, now that could be done because you lack facilities to feed the calves separately from the cows, but that's one thing I struggle with. The second question in terms of calf grazing, the quality of the forage is going to be what drives the performance of those calves. If they're on endophyte infected tall fescue over the next 45 days, I don't expect them to do very well. If they're on another forage source that's of higher quality, it's, it's possible that they could gain well, but I think it speaks to a broader issue, and that's that, you know, I, I think a lot of producers across this state are too conservative with their average daily gain targets in growing calves. A lot of folks will be pretty content with three quarters of a pound to a pound and a quarter of gain in calves. And I'll be honest, I do not believe that it's worth your time or the use of your resources to get those levels of gain in calves. To me, if the calves are not gaining, but bare minimum a pound and a half, but really more like close to two pounds a day, I don't know that it's necessarily worth your time or effort depending on your program. Now, if it's very expensive to put that two pounds a day gain on, it may not make sense in that case. But if all it takes is pasture plus a few pounds of supplement, we really need to think about how much we've improved genetics over time and how much better our cattle are today and how we can capture the value of weight gain in some of these younger calves. I think there's tremendous opportunity in this state to do so. So I, for me, 
fescue. I, I don't think they're going to do all that well by themselves, right? Without supplement right now, but you know, even if they're on a higher quality forage, we probably still need to be supplementing them anyways, and probably need to be supplementing them somewhere around a percent of their body weight per day. Is where that's a place where I like to start at. 